Hello, welcome to the Wednesday, September 19th, 2018 edition of the Sands and Storm Center's Stormcast. My name is Johannes Ulrich and today I'm recording from Jacksonville, Florida. One of the reconnaissance tools that has become really popular over the last year or so is certificate transparency. These are the logs that certificate authorities maintain whenever they are issuing a certificate. And well, these logs are public. And Rob now has a nice overview of various tools that you can use to query these logs. Personally, I do think that certificate transparency is a necessary feature of certificate authorities, and you should certainly take advantage of it in a defensive sense in that you monitor any certificates being issued for your domains. If you do want to keep your own host names or internal certificates private, then by all means set up your own internal certificate authority and then you don't have to really comply with these certificate transparency requirements. And then a listener reminded me that I overlooked an issue that came up actually late last week about Kodi, the open source home theater software. You'll find that a lot of these video sticks and other similar small appliances that you usually buy for around $100 are built around Kodi. Now, the thing with Kodi is that you can download add-ons and the official add-ons, of course, are somewhat restricted in their functionality. So a lot of users attempted to sign up for alternative repositories, which provide add-ons that may not be as well vetted as the original installation or these official add-ons. The result is that yes, your TV stick may be mining crypto coins or backdoors could be installed via these malicious add-ons. EZ Security wrote this up in a blog post with details about some of the crypto mining plugins that they found. So if you're running the software, take a look at it and make sure that you trust any add-ons that you are installing. And this reminds me, I totally forgot to announce a winner for the August version of our Raspberry Pi sweepstake. So I'll do that tomorrow. And then again, in order to participate, all it takes is a comment or some feedback or a correction about this podcast. Best way to do this is via the Internet Storm Center comment page. And then use something like podcast or such as a subject, which will make, me, will make it easier for me to find these comments. DNSSEC is another protocol I have been talking about for years. It's a great idea, but implementing it is just very painful. Some statistics show that 40% of networks actually tried to implement it, but then didn't. Currently, only 14% of DNS queries are apparently DNSSEC verified based on some data from APNIC. Now, Cloudflare is now entering the DNSSEC game and they hope to make a similar impact as they made to, for example, TLS. The problem they're trying to address is the problem of DS records in part. DS records are records that are essentially a hash of your keys. You deposit them with your registrar and they're being offered by your parent zone. So theshield.org has a DS record and it is being served by .org name servers. The problem is keeping those DS records updated. That's sort of one of the big pain points when it comes to DNSSEC. You have to rotate them whenever you rotate your key signing keys which should be about uh, once a year or so. And so far, this has been a very manual process. And also, you had to be very careful that you deployed your new keys at the same time that you deployed the new DS record. Well, there is now a new RFC that sort of automates some of this signaling and Cloudflare promises to take advantage of this RFC. Your registrar also has to support it in order for you to take advantage of this feature via Cloudflare. 
And one and a half years after fixing uh, authentication bypass flaw, Western Digital fell for yet another very obvious, very simple vulnerability in its MyCloud devices. Apparently all it takes is a username equals admin cookie. It's sort of one of those things, if I show this in class, uh, people always wonder, how could someone be possibly so stupid to actually write code like this? Well. Uh, I guess Western Digital has the answer for this question. At this point, there is no patch available. Well, and that's it for today. So thanks again for listening and talk to you again tomorrow. Bye.